Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and hope you're having a great day wherever you are. This is in my continuing series, uh, Luminar Quick Tips. And this one's about soft focus and soft glow. And I wanted to compare those two because if you're not really thinking or using them, thinking about them and, and kind of what the titles say, they both say soft. So you might be like, well, what the hell is that? And like, what do I need that for and, and why? So I want to walk through a photo real quick and show you the, uh, the difference between soft focus and soft glow. They're very different and they're very useful. Um, and uh, so let's jump in. So I started with this photo. Actually, uh, that's not true. I started with this photo. And this was something I shot on Route 66 in a little town called Tucumcari, New Mexico. And uh, yeah, that's hard to spell. But it's a it's an incredibly beautiful place, the Blue Swallow Motel. In fact, I was lucky enough to get a room there that night. And so I just stood in this uh, parking lot here until the guy turned out the light. So I was there for a couple hours and I, I have countless photos of this thing because I just love it. I love neon signs and it's just beautiful. And, you know, I've seen a lot of photos of this over the years. Finally got there. So anyway, what did I do? Uh, there's a whole bunch of filters here and I'm not going to go through all of them because all I really did is I went to my preset pack called London Calling and I grabbed this one called Faffing About and hit apply and it applied. Hey, that's how presets work. Um, so it was quick and easy, and you know I went from that to that. Not a huge difference, but it's definitely brighter, a little bit punchier. And truthfully, I mean, this is a neon sign at blue hour on Route 66. Like, I'm just going to go for it on color. So apologize to those of you that really like black and whites. Uh, you're not going to see any in this video. Um, the next thing I did is I added an adjustment layer because I do want to make some refinements. And usually when I'll add a preset, if it's a couple of minor tweaks, then I'll go make those minor tweaks on that preset, which would have been on this base layer. But if it's several things I think I want to do, I'll just leave that preset on that layer and go add a new layer so I can make adjustments without interfering with where the preset started. Now, obviously you can always just, if you do mess up, you know, mess up the preset, you can always just go choose it again and, you know, refresh and go back to your base uh, preset. But I just prefer to say, I'm just going to take my customizations to another layer. And that's what I did. So Accent AI, as you can see, it's just going to brighten up the photo and it's actually not that significant. Let me see the before and after. Oh, you know what? Uh, I was like, I didn't even notice that. Um, I got the layer turned off. You know, you think you know Luminar and then you do something like that and you prove that, you know, hey, um, I forget stuff all the time. Anyway, so now that the layer's on, let me turn on Accent AI and you can see it makes a fairly substantial difference in the brightness, uh, especially in the darker areas because that's what Accent AI does. It'll uh, fix things, right? Well, what needed fixing was it was too dark. So it's a little bit brighter. I like that. I, th I like where we're going. Next, I add tone. And so let me turn that on. And you can see it's given a little bit more punch in the color. And that's because I increased the contrast. It has that effect. So just be careful. And again, we're doing a big color thing here. So I'm not trying to hide the color, but um, you know, I'm going to have to tone it down a little bit and I'll do that next. But um, here I just bumped up the contrast and smart tone. I took the highlights down and the whites up a little bit. So just some refinements. Let me show you one more time before. There it is. And after. So you can see the color's gotten a little punchier and that's where I bring in saturation and vibrance. And I just took them both down uh, high 20s. It was just a even for me it was a little too blue and a little too saturated it looked like you know somebody just got a little happy with the crayons um anyway so i, I want to take that down in fact i might actually bring it back a little bit because i mean hell it is neon and it is route 66 go crazy right so there you go call that crazy um so there's that um so there's a photo and, and many times i might would say all right i started there and i'm here now and i like it um I think it's cool. It's nice looking, but there's a couple things I don't really like about the photo, and that's where soft focus and soft glow are going to come in. So let me turn on this layer. Now, soft focus, as the name implies, actually softens up the focus. I talked about this in a, uh, a video uh, recently, uh, you know, a week or so ago, where I was talking about noise reduction and four different filters I used to like reduce noise, which is to me really smoothing out a photo. Soft focus is really good at that. So let me show you how I use that in this photo. Soft focus, let me turn that on. If you look at the sky, and boom, very much different, right? And that's soft focus number two. Let me show you what number one would have been. It's basically a little bit brighter, but to me it added a little too much kind of pop on the sign, and I'm doing that with the next filter. So I'm gonna go back to soft focus two. Let me turn it off again. Look at the sky back here. If you look at the clouds, 
uh, here and over here, there was a lot of drama. I mean, it had been raining up until uh, blue hour started. So I was honestly, my one night there, I was afraid I was gonna get rained out and be unable to shoot it. And I was literally just, you know, nervous about that. But the rain quit, but all the clouds were there. So still a lot of drama in the sky which can be really cool, and I've edited some of the photos from this night in such a way that I accentuate that drama, but for this one I decided I don't really wanna do that. I wanna kinda of hide that drama because for me it's more about the sign and the car. That's really the core of the photo uh, because I mean, it's that's the shit right there. I mean, that's a killer sign, and you get this automobile from the 1950s. I mean, bang, that's all I wanna talk about. And to me, the kind of the drama in the skies is a little bit distracting. So that's where soft focus comes in. So let me turn that on again and show you what happens. It smooths out that. And that's why I used it in the noise reduction video. This actually may be a better example uh, than used in that video. But let me show you. I just brushed it into certain areas of the sky. So let me get the brush. You can see that. Oh, you know what? Um, that's funny. I straightened and cropped the photo. And so you can see what I cropped out. Um, and that's why there's that hard line there. It's funny, I never noticed that. Um, anyway, so you can see where I brushed the, um, the soft focus into the sky, but then also I took it at a reduced opacity, and that's the beauty of being able to do this filter masking, is you can mask it in at different areas at different opacities. And so I did 100% in the sky. I didn't do anything there simply because there's no drama. Like all the cloud, the, the crunchiness that's going on with the clouds is up above. I didn't see anything there. There's not really any noise, so I just left it alone. But I did reduce the opacity pretty low here, so that's maybe a 30 or 40%. And I just brushed it in uh, on the sidewalk there simply just to soften that up a little bit because I don't want to uh, draw attention to any detail in that area. I just want to soften that up a little bit because, again, for me, it's about the car and the sign. So that's soft focus. Now, soft glow, uh, let me just read it to you because... Um, it talks about how it impacts uh, street lights, for example. Creates a lighting effect, especially around bright areas such as street lights or sky. That's why I use soft glow on this photo because look where it says Blue Swallow Motel. I'm going to turn on the filter and it's just going to kind of glow, right? Boom. Now, you may or may not like that. And if you don't, that's totally cool. It's to me a good demonstration of what soft glow does. And the reason I used it here is because to me, this is one of those, you know, it was a dark and stormy night kind of things. And what it does is it accentuates the lightness around the Blue Swallow Motel, the words in that sign. And that's why I used it here because I want to make that pop glow, you know, give it a little glow, make it pop a little bit as though it's like a beacon in the darkness, right? This is sounding like some bad, bad movie, and it might be. Um, but that's kind of why I wanted to use it. I use it on neon signs. Um, I use it on street lights and things like that, but I think soft glow works really well for that. And so one more time, um, you're going to get a little bit more detail in the sign without it, but you get that nice glow that makes it, to me, it's like a shining beacon in the darkness kind of thing. And that's why I use soft glow here. I think it's really good at accentuating that kind of look. And that's really it. Soft focus, as the name implies, it softens up the focus. Brush it in at different opacities in different areas. Use it like you would noise reduction. In the case of this sky, it helped me smooth that sky out, reduce the intensity of the cloud formations and kind of the crunchiness so that they're not as distracting. So that's what uh, soft focus is great at. And soft glow, as the name implies, it does add a glow, especially around brighter areas. And I knew that this Blue Swallow Motel part of the sign Obviously, it's bright compared to the rest of the photo, and I wanted to add soft glow just to create that little bit of glow, like it's glowing, like a glowing beacon in the darkness. As I said, it creates a little bit of a halo around the sign and stuff. I don't really care. That looks to me like what a glowing sign would be doing in a dark and stormy night kind of thing. You may or may not like the look, but it's just a demonstration, and that's cool. No feelings, uh, no hard feelings if you don't like it. There's the before. There's the after. I think we came a long way in a short amount of time, but really I wanted to talk about soft focus and soft glow. Two great filters, two really fun filters to use to add some sort of creative elements to your photo. And that's part of the beauty of Luminar. There's 50 filters, lots of tools, lots of fun. And uh, that's it, my friends. Hope you liked it. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment for me. Hit like, hit subscribe, share it with your friends. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, I appreciate it very much. Have a great day wherever you are. Come back soon. I'll have another video. And until then, adios.